should have mentioned earlier that Dimitri and I had new wills drawn up in London after the wedding, and I'm sure it supersedes the one from last year. Oh, it may very well. I hope this hasn't been too much trouble for you. No trouble at all. Thank you. So, this, uh, this will was drawn up in London? Yeah. Well, I'd very much like to talk to the lawyer that drew it up, you know, just to make sure things are as they should be. If you could give me his name and phone number, I'd certainly appreciate it. I... Yeah, I have it. Here. There you go. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure this won't be any kind of a problem at all. I'll let myself out. Yeah. Wait, um... Can I ask you something? Well, as I told you, she really was expecting to uh, receive Maximilian, Dimitri's horse. I really thought she'd get it, too. But Dimitri made other arrangements. I find that very hard to believe. No, this is all his supposed widow, you know, this, this Alex person. Anyway, I, uh, I think it's just proof beyond any doubt at all that she never even really knew Dimitri, let alone loved him. I mean, Dimitri adored that horse. I know that he wanted Bianca to have Maximilian. She's the only one he ever allowed to ride Maximilian. Well, I wouldn't be too upset about it. I mean, that's what happens when people die and states are divided. Well, this is about a lot more than a horse. Apparently. She has claimed everything that was dearest to Dimitri, and she's pushing away all the friends that loved him for years, and she's saying that she's acting on Dimitri's wishes. I will never believe that he fell in love with this cold and, and heartless woman. I know this makes this difficult for you because you do represent Dimitri's family, but he said you were very trustworthy and reliable. Did he? Well, to be honest, that kind of skips over some of the more colorful chapters of my life. But I guess all in all, yes, I've kept myself out of jail. <laughs> oh. It's so strange. When something like this happens, you just forget how to laugh. I mean, I guess it's not so strange. No, not so strange at all. Give yourself some time, and one day you'll be walking down the street, something will strike you funny, and ha-ha, you laugh. <laughs> it seems inconceivable, then. I'm sure it does right now. You wanted to ask me something, yes? Yes, I do. Please, sit down. Thank you. Uh, the fact is, my not mentioning the new will isn't through a lapse of memory. It's because I am so concerned about Edmund's reaction to it. Of course. Well, I'm sure Edmund realizes that when people get married, they do often change their wills. I know, but he is so damn suspicious of me that I think bringing this up is just going to make things worse. This will doesn't have to be a problem, I don't think. Look, as a uh, representative of Dimitri's family, it is my job to authenticate this will. And believe me, that is exactly what I'll be doing. Mm. I expect nothing less of you. Once it's authenticated, I'm sure Edmund won't have a problem accepting it. I'm sure he'll honor his brother's last wishes. So, when I speak to your solicitor, I'll ask him when they're going to be reading the will there. And I'll uh, make sure I'm in London for the reading. I imagine you'll be there as well. I haven't made any plans to be, no. Well, I would do that. As I said, the sooner the better. You're right. Good. So, when I speak to Mr. Clive Garrison Esquire at Dobbs and Garrison, I'll tell him that you and I are in agreement. We want to get the ball rolling and do it as quickly as possible. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Alex, you take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Sean? Hello, it's Alex. Yes, I'm fine. Listen, this is very important. 
want you to contact our solicitor immediately and tell him that under no circumstances is he to take a phone call from a Mr. Jackson Montgomery. Shall I admit, there's an explanation for everything Alexandra's done, okay? Some people have an aversion to an open casket. And you're confirming that an autopsy just wasn't indicated here. Well, it certainly would have been helpful, but in a case like this, it's not necessary in order to determine the cause of death. Uh, but it, Dimitri was just so healthy. I mean, how could he suddenly die? Well, things like this occurred, happened all of a sudden and with no warning. I mean, so if that's the basis of your doubts... No, 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 it's, it's, it's more than that, Joe. The, she just showed up. She's in the... Nobody even knew she existed. From what I understand, though, Dimitri told you intended to surprise you. Yeah, with a wife. Why not? The Dimitri I remember is very romantic, very impetuous. I mean, what's so strange that he would all of a sudden fall head over heels in love and get married? Everybody was saying that, and for a minute I believe that, too. Mm -hmm. And what changed your mind? Dimitri made a lot of trips back and forth from Pine Valley after he met this woman, okay? So if he did fall in love, if he was happy, he would have wanted to share it with me. I know that. I know that. Unless he had a reason not to. Perhaps he did. In any case, I see nothing to give rise to any suspicions. Okay, listen to me. I'm, I'm going on just report as Gus Joe. Okay, I know something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but I know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So just talk to her, okay? And let me watch her. Just let me try to get a feel for who this woman is. All right. All right, I'll do that. If it'll bring you peace of mind. Come in. Hello, Alex. I didn't expect to see you here. I had a message from Dr. Martin about the report on Dimitri's death. Yes, remember I asked if it was okay if I faxed it to him? Yes. Mrs. Barrick, I'm Dr. Martin. Hello. Very sorry to keep you waiting. I had to look in on, on one of my patients. No, 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 not at all. I just arrived. I understand you have some questions. Is something wrong? No. Actually, there's nothing wrong. I uh, was explaining to Edmund the report was very thorough, very complete. But I'm a, an old friend of the family, and I would like to know as many details as I can. In particular, I would like to ask about the moments before Dimitri's death. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Then all of a sudden the color drained from his face and he grabbed his head and complained of this blinding headache. He said he felt nauseous and sick and then he collapsed. And he grabbed hold of me tightly, and I had bruises on my arms. His face was so contorted with pain. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid. I. When you say all of a sudden, are you talking about a matter of seconds? Yes, it was a matter of seconds. And just before that, you would say that he appeared perfectly normal? He was perfectly normal. I know this is difficult for you. I've been through this before. What would you say about his state of mind in the weeks prior to the wedding? He was happy. He was looking forward to our future. We both were. Did you uh, notice any signs of uh, fatigue or depression? The days that Dimitri and I were married, he was so happy. He was really... He was really full of life. And right before he collapsed, he'd been talking about our life together and what it would be like. And he'd been showing me these presents that he bought for Edmund's children. And he was talking about the children that he and I hoped to have. He wanted them to grow up with their cousins, to be a close, loving family. 
right from the beginning because he wanted to avoid the pain that he and Edmund had gone through before they'd learned to love each other as brothers. These thoughts, they gave him a great deal of pleasure. That was his state of mind. He was hopeful. I couldn't have wished for a better end to his life. I'm terribly sorry to call back these memories. It's all right. It's just that when I look back, you know, I realize that we didn't have a future together and that our dreams were just that. They were just dreams and to see him in so much pain and I didn't know what to do. I was helpless. Oh, why do you keep making me go through this again and again? Mrs. Marrick, it was never my intention to cause you pain. I know that. I'm just trying to help him come to terms with his brother's death. But the irony is, I have been trying to do that since we first met, and you simply won't believe a word I say. But I am simply trying to understand. There are some details you that don't make any sense. You because your brother is dead and you want to do something for him. And nothing would please you more than to expose me as a fraud or an imposter. Or worse. You'd see that somehow as a victory for Dimitri. That is not true. Well, true or not, you're going to have to carry on without my help. Because I'm done answering your questions. Find another way of dealing with your grief. Doctor, I apologize and I hope that we meet again under better circumstances.